Good evening, I'm John Carter and welcome to Poland Daily. 30 tourists from Poland have sustained injuries in a bus accident that occurred near Antalya in southern Turkey. The wounded have been hospitalised and some of the injuries are considered serious. Spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Eva Suvara, has stated that the condition of victims is not life-threatening. As of this moment, four people with minor injuries left the hospital, out of the total seven who stayed overnight. The condition of the three people with the worst injuries is stable. It was upgraded overnight from life-threatening to stable. They underwent various medical treatments. One person had surgery of the face, the second one had their hand operated on, and the third has a spine surgery and was given a CT scan before any treatment will be done. We will have more information later. Today, the police are celebrating their 100th anniversary. The civic police were created during the fight for Polish borders. Today, over 100,000 police officers and 25,000 civil workers pay service to our country. The celebration was held at Piłsudski Square in Warsaw. According to a survey conducted by the Kantar workshop, only three Polish political parties will cross the electoral threshold in the fall. The ruling Law and Justice Party has the greatest amount of support. According to the Kantar workshop survey, only three political parties would cross the electoral threshold if the Polish parliamentary elections were held today. The Law and Justice Party, together with United Poland and the Agreement Party, would win with 39% of the votes. The Civic Platform Party would get 26%. The Spring Party would be the third party crossing the electoral threshold with 5%. Boris Johnson has been officially elected the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. He visited Queen Elizabeth and gave a speech in front of his headquarters, located at 10 Downing Street in London, as per British tradition. Johnson has caused a stir amongst leftists in Britain with his politically incorrect rhetoric. He has also declared his backing of Brexit, although he has previously flip-flopped on the matter. Johnson's strong personality is currently dividing Britain, although much of the public are united in support of previous PM Theresa May's rule coming to an end. Britain's outgoing Prime Minister Theresa May said that her successor, Boris Johnson, had her full support and that she was pleased to hand over the position to him. May took over as Prime Minister in the aftermath of the 2016 vote to leave the European Union and is standing down just over three years later, having failed to deliver Brexit with her divorce deal with the bloc rejected three times by a deeply divided parliament. Theresa May issued a parting shot to opposition Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn using her final weekly parliamentary question session to suggest he follow her lead and quit his job. To the people of this country, but I say to the right honourable gentleman, I say to the right honourable gentleman, as this is the last time that we will have this exchange across these dispatch boxes. May herself survived a confidence vote in December, but after her Brexit deal was roundly rejected by Parliament three times, she bowed to pressure from her lawmakers to let someone else take over. Speaking from Downing Street, Johnson said he was going to do a new and a better deal with the European Union as he promised to deliver Brexit on October 31st, do or die. I pay tribute to the fortitude and patience of my predecessor and her deep sense of public service. But in spite of all her efforts, it has become clear that there are pessimists at home and abroad who think, after three years of indecision, that this country has become a prisoner to the old arguments of 2016. And in this home of democracy, we are incapable of honouring a democratic mandate. And so I am standing before you today to tell you, the British people, that those critics are wrong. The Queen held an audience with Boris Johnson this afternoon and requested him to form a new administration. Johnson accepted Her Majesty's offer and was appointed Prime Minister and First Lord of the Treasury. The search team for the Institute of National Remembrance, led by Krzysztof Szwagczyk, have begun work in the former prison at Rakowiecka Street in Warsaw. There is a chance that the remains of the legendary Captain Witold Pielecki lie within the grounds. 
During the German occupation, soldiers and activists of the Polish underground state were murdered in the former prison at Rakowiecka Street in Warsaw. After the Second World War, members of the underground independence movement were met with the same fate. Today we have revealed human remains. This means we have confirmation that another area in the Rakowiecka prison hides human remains. We do not know yet what period they come from and whether they are victims of German or communist crimes. It is important, however, that they are found, which is of particular importance at the moment. While we are aware that this area will soon become a museum building site, which I think will happen soon, before this work is started, it is important that we check the whole area and examine it. Archaeological works are being carried out on the premises of the so-called Spacerniaki from the 50s, which were dismantled for the period of research. We are currently working in an area that until recently was occupied by the prison yard. It was recently dismantled. At the very edge of this field we have a series of burial pits, which we are exploring at the moment. So far we have uncovered the remains of three people. I think that this situation will change in the next few hours. We will have to wait for the identification of the victims. Genetic research that will help determine the period from which the remains originate will begin after the completion of the archaeological work. Genotyping will be possible very soon. Everything depends on the information gathered, the arrangement of the bodies, the depth of their burial, whether they have any artifacts or not, the arrangement of the remains, whether they have any wounds or not. All of this piques our interest, but this genotyping cannot be carried out until the activities in this area are completed. Professor Szwagrzyk predicts archaeological excavations in the area of the former prison at Rakowiecka Street will last about three weeks. This will certainly not be the last stage of our activities. We have to examine the whole area, so I think we'll need one more stage, and all the free spaces in the Rakowiecka prison have been examined already. The first exhumation work in the former detention center at Rakowiecka Street was carried out in July of 2016. According to historians, the remains of Witold Pilecki can be found in the prison. Witold Pilecki was murdered in this place 71 years ago after being sentenced by the communist court following a fake trial. So far, Szwagrzyk's team have managed to find the remains of Colonel Zygmunt Szendzielasz, Wupaszki, and Major Hieronim Dekutowski, Zapora, among others. Thank you very much for joining me here this evening at Poland Daily. I'm John Carter. Stay tuned after the break for Poland Daily Weather. It's followed by the business, culture, history, and then finally the travel.